I'd like to call the public hearing to order. If you'd stand for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome everyone, and welcome everyone watching at home. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Carter? Present. Trustee Mariscal? Trustee Kazam? Present. Trustee Yet? Present. Trustee Weisenberg? Present. Trustee DeVore? Present. And I did have a communication from Trustee Mariscal. Trustee Mariscal works for Ameren, and due to the rains and storms tonight, she may be delayed at work, so just wanted to let you all know that. Uh, we would be at the swearing in of Sarah DeVore, and I want to take this time to thank Sarah and the outgoing trustees and the incoming trustees. We had a, a busy um, month here at Village Hall, and the time of the swearing in, we rearranged some days and some times, and everyone was very agreeable and cooperative, including Sarah, who was running a little bit behind that night due to another commitment. So um, we're excited to swear her in tonight. So Madam Clerk. And raise your right hand. I'm just gonna read this. So people repeat after me. Okay. I, Sarah Devore. I, Sarah Devore. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of Village Trustee. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of Village Trustee according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we would be at, be at comments from the audience. Uh, if you'd like to come forward and uh, speak to the, to the board, please give your name and address, and if possible, keep it under five minutes, please. Comments from the audience, welcome. <coughs> Good evening, my name is Jeanette Gruber. We live at 3814 North Monroe. I haven't done this before, so I have letters from two neighbors that we'd like to have read into the record. Um, these are the originals. I have people who can read them. Um, how does that work to add their letters, their written um, Council, what would you like to we, we, we don't have a specific procedure for that. If you'd like to read them um, as part of your comments. Read them into the record if you'd like. Well, I would share with you, I'd still like my own five minutes. You have your, you'll have your own time, but if you'd like to read the neighbor's letters, please do so okay. now. I, I would like to have my own five minutes. Too. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I have two people who said that they would read them, so I'll have them read them and then I'll talk. Is that okay? All right. My name is Edward Flint. I live at 3814 North Monroe. Uh, this is a letter from Stephanie Crawford, and I quote, My name is Stephanie Crawford. I live at 905 East Division Avenue, Peoria Heights, Illinois, 61616, with my husband Dan Crawford and our kids. He is the owner of Titan Games, a small business in Heritage Square. I am concerned that if the plan goes through without changes, that our neighborhood will be negatively impacted by the loss of green space and the addition of heavier traffic flow. I would rather see fewer retail spaces for which the current parking would be adequate. This would help alleviate the increased traffic and leave, my green leave the, the, the green space. My husband and I feel strongly about keeping green space in my community. Thank you. Stephanie Crawford. Hi, my name is Lisa Trimble. I live at 3808 North Monroe Avenue. This letter is from uh, Jennifer O'Connor, um, 811 East Division Avenue, Peoria Heights. My name is Jennifer. I am an almost six year resident of Peoria Heights in its adjoining neighborhoods. I love it so far. 
I do a lot of walking with my family and friends. However, I can see where there's room for improvement. I was by chance made aware of the proposal and blueprint for the renovation planned on the commercial property on Monroe and War Memorial Drive, very close to my own home. Um, it's one of the nicer looking shopping commercial properties that run along War Memorial on either side from McDonald's at Prospect to Wisconsin Avenue. Ideally, all the commercial areas and parking areas, sidewalks on either side of war would have safe and invite, would have safe and inviting to the public. Lighting, greenery, and walkways, emphasis on safe for those walking and driving, but also of great importance in my own experience in business, the inviting of a gray, kind of quotes, the inviting of a gray concrete strip with crumbling sidewalks too near to the busy fast traffic with only neon signs coloring the way isn't inviting. In my own, I am sure in a consensus of anyone else's opinion, I would like to see an expansion on what Upper Prospect Road has done for their business district only on War Memorial, including lots more walking and green space. This being said, I strongly encourage the powers that be to leave the green areas at the proposed subway site parking areas uh, because not only are they good for the environment and beautiful, they make the heights a heck of a lot more inviting to others than wood adding, especially in that area along War Memorial, more concrete. Thanks, Jennifer. Is it suitable to offer the originals to the secretary? Sure, if you'd give those to the clerk, please. Excuse me, the clerk. I apologize. Thank you so much for having this hearing, and um, I appreciate that um, Gary is looking for a way to keep um, Subway in the Heights. Um, as I said before, I don't need to say my address again, do I? Okay. Um, I value greatly the um, entrance from War Memorial. In, into um, Monroe and uh, my small business is a CPA firm and um, I have just put a little bit of landscaping out there so that it's a little more green and um, I just would really like to see a smaller development instead of three retail units either two or one and my primary thoughts are one in your plan that was um, given out at the groundbreaking of the special hotel, which is fabulous, by the way, um, and I'm very supportive of development in general, um, it already identifies the Monroe War Memorial um, intersection as a high-risk intersection that needs improvement, particularly better access by sidewalks and bicycles, and it's in your own plan. I mean, in doing research for wanting to support the fact that um, we don't want so much commercial development in that single space that if we could just have one or two retail units, it would be so much more, um, we wouldn't need to lose the green space to parking we could have, um, I don't know how the drive through works. I only know that um, there's going to be at least 50 cars in and out of there every day. And I'm very happy about subway, but maybe we need a parking subway. I don't know. Um, but I would share with you, I don't want to give up the green space for more parking spaces. Instead, it would be more... Um, it would just be better to have slightly less additional commercial space and make that the parking would fit where it is already. So that's that's an idea. Um, the other thing that seems to be true is that this is a special use as I understand it. And um, I would really like to see that there was um, a consideration around how much more traffic there would be and whether or not that drive-through is allowed by IDOT. Um, this is not my bag, so I would just share with you. I'm interested in knowing what your process was to work with that. Um, that includes Gary's process to work with that. Um, I'm interested to know. Um, but I would like to observe that um, a drive-in restaurant is considered um, a special use permit. I believe it's under B3, and um, it's not B2. And so um, I would really like 
the board to take some time and allow our gracious developer to come up with a better plan that has fewer um, retail units. So that's my invitation. Do you have any questions for me? Am I at all unclear? Uh, no, I, unless any of the board does, ma'am. I, I, I do, because I, I keep hearing the green space to leave the green space, but he already, there's no green space there, right? There is a, a parking lot, and, uh, and there's already a plaza there. Right? May I address that? Sure. Is that okay? Um, right at War Memorial, there is a thin sidewalk, and then there are about, I'd say, 10 feet of grass. My understanding of the plan, which I did review both at the zoning meeting and before I came today, is that um, Mr. Kemp needs to ask the village to approve three parking spaces that would consume the grass near, uh, like the grass between the parking lot and the sidewalk. So there is a strip, a pretty wide strip of grass, which is appreciated. But I don't want to see that going to three more parking spaces because the commercial development is sort of overdone. So that's where that comes from. If you wanted to see the plan, I'd be happy to share it with you. I do have it with me. Do you see the three little um, rectangles um, right against War Memorial? I'm assuming that's those right here. Yeah. Those, those are parking spaces that would consume the grass. And those are the three, those are, that's where the subtraction of green space comes. Now I would offer I would also support, potentially as a taxpayer, us reimbursing him for putting in a bush or a tree or something. So I just want you to know I'm, I'm not about not developing. I just want it to be positive or more positive. Okay. Did that help? Yeah. Yes, it did. Thank you. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask if is anyone else wanted to say something? I don't know, Mr. Kemp, if you want. I mean, you'll get a chance to speak, I'm sure, won't you? Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. All right, welcome, sir. Would you give your name and address? Dan Callahan. I'm um, the owner of Greg's Florist at 1015 East War Memorial. Um, at uh, the um, zoning commission hearing, uh, the, the Board of Appeals, we did kind of go into some of the details and the opportunities that this project uh, provided and um, also some of the potential downfalls of having uh, another uh, extension of the building and to, more to the point, if parking would be extended into the green strip that Janet was referring to. I would hope that the board would take into account how hard it is to get any green on, on any of the, the, the locations in the commercial districts in the Heights and this is one that has served very well for um, that area to soften the rather large parking lot but it's done a good job because it's on a slope and it does a, a good job uh, for um, uh, in the War Memorial uh, zone it's a, it's amazingly softening feature and I would hope that we could maintain that in the future. I appreciate too, um, I'm a business person on adjacent to, to Gary, so I know that we're all trying to um, maximize how much we can get out of uh, our, our um, businesses, but this is one case I think where it would be short-sighted to introduce parking instead of the existing green space. So that's um, my request to the, the um, trustees to keep in mind this is a, a special little bit of green in a very um, uh, busy commercial area and we hope we can keep it that way. Thank you, Dan. Anyone else? I, 
Hi, my name is Barry Rollette. I live at 3823 North Monroe, uh, about a block up. I've lived on Monroe Avenue for over 50 years. Uh, I was opposed to a drive-in restaurant down there when it originally came up, and uh, we were able to get it stop then. I still don't believe that it's a good area for any type of drive-in, drive-through restaurant due to the fact of the amount of traffic that goes through the corner, uh, the exit that's going to be on Ward Drive, and the fact that you have an entrance to a school that's going to be directly across from it. I think that the amount of traffic that's going to go there is going to not be safe. You know, we are again we are finally getting kids back in the neighborhood. And as you will see traffic back up there, because people will be using it, going to work, coming home from work, the times when kids are going to be out, I think you are going to again see danger to children. I also realize I'm coming late to this process. And I, I talked to Mr. Pitzel about some of the notifications you know that that happened that, that we can work on that because I didn't really know about it until last week I had a quick chance to look at the plans uh, last well yesterday uh, and that I am glad to see that the cars when they would exit that are going to be going back out on war drive at least that's a chance to keep them out of the neighborhood but on those five o'clock days, people are going to be cutting back up through the neighborhood because they're going to get frustrated and they're going to get tired of waiting. And they're going to find ways to go up the alley, to go up Monroe in, in through the neighborhoods. Uh, I don't like the loss of the green space because it is at least an entrance, a gateway into our neighborhood. The school does a, a lot of work to keep their areas nice. This is another nice entryway. And the thing that confused me is the, the three parking spots that were put in late that will take up the green space. If you park in them, you have to wait until everybody's out of the drive through Because they back to exit them, it looks like from a pan, you would have to back into the cars that are waiting in line in the drive through to go out the corner. So, you know, I understand growth. You know, I, I do have fears, I'll be honest with you, with the development on Prospect pushing hardships possibly to accommodate it into our neighborhoods down there south of Lake Street. I understand, you know, the, the struggles that you're going to have. But uh, I would at least ask that uh, you maintain the green space. I, I really doubt that three parking spaces are a deal breaker for this this type of development. From what I understand, they're already in excess of the required number of parking spaces by the ordinance. So uh, I, I would like you to keep those ideas in mind when you're thinking about it and debating it uh, so that we can at least keep the impact to our neighborhood a minimum from the project coming down. Thank you, Barry. Anyone else that hasn't spoken? I was going to speak for Ms. Okay, come. Sorry. Again, my name is Lisa Trimble. Um, I have a master's degree in urban planning, 10 years experience as a planner before I chose to stay home with my children. So I came at this from a little bit different perspective. I mean, the first questions that popped into my mind are, gee, you know, the villages, are they going to be required to pay to improve this alley? Are they going to be driving heavier trucks up? How much more is this going to cost? And then, you know, I looked at that um, background in transportation planning, actually. Um, looked at that exit as it went out, and I was like, well, who called IDOT? You know, this is War Memorial. And we go to the meeting, and no one's called IDOT. So, you know, I wondered what was it going to be like if they tried to turn left out onto War, right out onto Moore, and the Greg building that blocks the sight distance. I mean, plus you've got cars moving into already a turn lane. And I thought, well, this is a lot of confusing things going on in one spot. Who's going to pay to provide the police when the inevitable accident happens? And I know that those were things that if I were writing a planning report to a village that I worked for, I would have pointed out 
You know, this is going to cost us in the long run. And then further in the meeting, I learned that, you know, drainage had been a concern on this site when it was first developed. And when the developer spoke, he was like, yeah, there's this drainage circle-y thing and we're going to move it. But, you know, I didn't really see any plans or any calculation for the square, but actually cubic amount of water that this site is going to actually generate. I mean, he is already, under your own ordinance, <coughs> responsible for what impervious surface he created, but he's already with those three parking spots and his three proposed retail buildings looking at having crossed that 500, oh, excuse me, 5,000 square foot, you know, trigger that has you looking at stormwater in a stormwater plan, I thought. Um, and those were some of the first things, like is it going to cost you and where's the water going to go and, you know, I didn't think of other things. But then I started going through the process and I went to a really cool meeting and things were really fun and we got to the corridor plan, your 2016 plan, and it pointed out war as a entrance or another one of the entrances to Peoria Heights and wanting to beautify it and you know, people drive by now to Washington, I mean, you know, to go home to Washington over the bridge. Are they saying, you know, we don't want to stop here, this is like a scary spot, you know? What are they seeing on war? It, it's not right now, hey, this is Peoria Heights, I could stop and eat before I go home, or geez, if I lived in Peoria Heights, I'd already be home and I'm not going to have to fight traffic on the bridge. So it seemed, you know, that was one of the things your planners pointed out to you. I know the intersection of War and Monroe was pointed out as an accident center and one that was needing um, upgrading with sidewalks, accommodations for people walking back and forth. That was noted in this plan. Stormwater was noted in this plan. Um, I looked at the parking a little bit differently. I looked at your ordinance. I looked at um, Institute of Traffic Engineers, Urban Land, Land Institute, parking standards, started to look at some of the more, you know, moder modern take on parking in tight spaces like Peoria Heights. And if his business does need the parking, you know, I was, you know, they have parking standards for certain types of businesses. Yours is retail, 300 square foot of retail, that's going to be a parking spot. Um, and he comes close to meeting that for what he's proposed. I'm just kind of sitting here thinking, does he really have the queue, the parking? Are we going to force cars out onto our side streets to park? I don't really know. And when he says he has a parking problem, I'm not looking at it as a problem we have to solve for him. He proposed the three businesses that generate the need for more parking potentially on this site. Fewer businesses, less parking. So it doesn't seem like something we created. It was his request that created the need for the parking. Maybe that land can't accommodate that much more development even under your own codes. And then when we sat through the meeting, oh, Zoning Board of Appeals, the you know, the notification process was, yeah, it was all right, but we got there. Um, we weren't aware of this meeting tonight till we stopped in and talked to the city manager. Um, so it was kind of a surprise. We knew about the meeting coming up, but not the 5.30 appeal. Um, but the zoning board wasn't really clear, I think, on what their role is, that this was a special use, that the city administrator was capable of requesting a traffic study before approving this, that there were probably stormwater issues where it says you have a stormwater person who can also sign off on these plans. Uh, you know, there wasn't an engineer present to give any counsel, like, is there a water problem here? You know, is there traffic issues? So I was kind of... But, you know, just kind of concerned. I think even um, council suggested that, you know, they needed to look for a health, safety, welfare to support zoning. And, you know, you already have an ordinance. This is already a special use. You already listed a number of criteria that you can consider because this use is above and beyond what's actually permitted in this district and I'm not sure that that was even expressed in the role of the Zoning Board of Appeal. 
appropriately. But, and I have your ordinance as well as your plans here, so thank you. Okay, who else? Any other public comment? Any, uh, Rick, I'm going to get to you in here in a minute. Uh, so I'm going to try and save you for second to last. So, any other public comment? Okay, Mr. Pitzel, go ahead. Uh, Rick Pitzel, I'm the uh, chairman of the zoning board, Peoria Heights. Um, just to be clear, there is not a special use uh, requirement for this uh, establishment. <laughs> Code is very clear on what a drive-in is. It's for eating food in your car. It's very clear in the code. So there is no other uh, requirement in our code for drive-through restaurants. There is no other, uh, uh, nothing else in the ordinance that states anything about drive-throughs. And then number two, uh, the parking, um, the parking for that establishment, if you use the code, one park, one car per 300 square feet, um, he's 10 parking spaces over. I think he needs 32, around about, pretty close, 32, not being exact there. And he has 42. And then he wanted to add the three or four on the side by the drive through and that's what the zoning board uh, um, did not grant. We left the green space and said he did not need those four parking spots. So that's basically all the zoning board looked at. We looked at the site plan. He has a water detention, et cetera, et cetera. So from a site plan, it met all of the code and ordinance uh, issues. Uh, and then the extra parking is what we had um, turned down. Rick, just to clarify, he's 10 over without the three additional parking spots. Correct. Those three spots put him 13 over. Uh, my, my calculations and just using the calculations on the site plan, he's around 9,300 square feet. You need one per 300. He has about 32, something like that, is, is where he ends up okay. if you use the... Uh, so he's rough estimates on the site plan. Three. Correct. So if it's not 10, it might be 9. But okay. Thank you, Rick. Drive aisle is egress only, leaving the... Pardon? This is egress only back onto war. Correct. Okay. And that was the other thing. Uh, we did not um, have the, the, the person that talked about IDOT is correct. We did not have any report from IDOT. And... It wasn't requested. Okay. So, and then the uh, um, and then the egress of the of the drive-through would all go out onto War Memorial. This Again, it's not it's not like a McDonald's. We had the guy from Subway here. About twenty, I think he quoted about twenty-five percent of his businesses drive-through versus you know a McDonald's where it's like ninety. So it's much less traffic than a normal drive-through. Um, and we had precedents right up the road with McDonald's doing the exact same thing. And then Peoria has the precedents right across the street with Subway, I mean with uh, Starbucks doing the exact same thing. So that's... Starbucks is on the street. No. 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 Okay, any other public comment? Going once. Going twice. Comments from the audience are closed. Uh, council, what do you recommend the board? Uh, we have this on the agenda for the regular board meeting tonight. What do you recommend to the yes, board? Yes, um, th this is really just a public hearing um, on an appeal that was filed by Mr. Kemp on behalf of his land trust, uh, GLK Land Trust. So he would have an opportunity to present his appeal. We always do the public comments first. So I would say that we need to invite him up to present his appeal, and then that closes this part of the hearing, and it is an agenda item for the village board meeting, um, and then you would vote and, and discuss um, during the village board meeting. This is just the opportunity for the public and uh, the property owner to present their. Okay, Mr. Kemp, if you'd come forward, please. 
And, and, and real quick, um, it, it, it is on the agenda as a special use, and that, that, that is a mistake. It, it was a site plan. The site plan and special use application is identical, and all the criteria are identical, but this is actually was up just for a site plan review. Thank you, Mark. Welcome, Gary. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate being able to come up and talk to you and answer any questions that you might have for concern. Uh, my, my main uh, thing on all of it is just the parking in Peoria Heights. We own four different commercial properties in Peoria. We own one on Prospect. We own three on War Memorial Drive. And we've had nothing but issues from tenants saying, please give us more parking. And instead of trying to put it out on the street, we're trying to keep it in the parking area. And this plan that you have in front of you the three extra parking spots that we're asking for is if if we bring in Subway, which we would love to have them, uh, and then maybe bring in another restaurant or bring in a Verizon or a telephone store, mobile, whatever it might be, they're going to have employees and they're going to have extra uh, customers. and. When we just had the Caribbean Tan building, when we built that for Caribbean Tan and Curves, we actually looked into renting or leasing space from American Rental because we would flood the parking lot with just those two tenants, which is a good thing because it's bringing tax dollars to the Peoria Heights, and we're trying to continue to keep Subway in Peoria Heights and keep those tax dollars in Peoria Heights. And if we bring in a Verizon or any other type of retail store, it's going to generate more you know, retail taxes for the Heights. So those three extra parking spots are critical to the situation. And one of the people did wonder about the, the positioning of those. And they're going to be strictly for the employees of the subway to where they're not going to have to get in and out of the, you know, traffic. Because during the shift change, they're going to be, you know, during the heavy traffic for the drive throughs they're going to be stationed there to where there won't be an issue trying to get in and out. They'll, they'll be after the shift and after the uh, heavy traffic flow. So on that, I don't know if you would have any other questions for me. Uh, questions, trustees? The three parking, would it be um, posted staff only? We do not plan on putting it as that only because when they get there at the start of their shift, they're going to just be parked there before the store's even opened. And I just think that the signs would be more of a distraction. Like it'd just be nicer to have it just the curb and then the cars parked there. <coughs> the employees will be, you know, they'll be getting there probably half an hour or so to generate, you know, the food and the prep before the customers even start coming. So. The, the subway owner, he loved the idea of having the employees park there, a designated area. With the exception of the three parking, how much of the green space is actually being lost? We actually, uh, if you look at it, it's 40 foot by 15 foot, and that's probably even a little excessive, the 15 foot, because there's already some of the parking lot is there. So it's going to be less than 600 square foot of green. And there's a tremendous amount of green already there. And I love it. I, I, my therapy is mowing. So I mow that once or twice a week. And to, to cut 600 square foot out of that, it's not going to be really even recognizable that it's gone because there's a large amount. That's uh, the frontage there is, I believe, 130 feet. So you're, you're losing 40 foot. So you're still having nearly 90 feet of green on War Memorial. And you still have 220 feet of green on Monroe. So it's still a very attractive green piece uh, for War Memorial. Anything else, Trustee Weisenberg? Is the parking lot that's already existing there widening at all? It's no. like adjacent. Okay. Nope. Everything is remaining the same. Okay. Gary, could you give the board an update where you're at with IDOT in that discussion? IDOT did reach out to us, and we're still um, discussing with them and trying to find the options to where we can actually continue to go on with the plan. Uh, we are entertaining that if that was to not happen, that we would 
try and come up with a plan B, but that's going to be after we exhaust the plan A. So plan A is what? I mean, did I, I think, did I miss a meeting? Because I thought when we, um, it was brought to the board to extend the TIP to see if we can get you in the TIP, yes. you were looking to build subway, only subway that we talked about. And now, I mean, we get this, and now there's two more um, places that you want to build other than subway. So, and now, what's the problem with IDOT that uh, you're having? Well, you went to plan A to plan B. What's plan A and what's plan B? To, I guess I don't know. To that. answer the first question, the build out's the same. Trustee Carter, what has happened, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Gary, I think Subway came in and said they didn't need that much space. Correct. Therefore, that is opening up more retail space. I think that's correct. what, but the, fa the footprint has not changed as far as the actual build out. Correct. Right. Okay. right. So what's the difference between A and B that you said? What's your plan A? Is this plan A? This is plan A, and plan, plan, plan B doesn't exist. I'm just saying that I'll go to plan B if we are not able to get the uh, permission from IDOT to have the drive through go through the alley and onto War Memorial Drive. Okay, so that is where the holdup really is, is that IDOT has not approved this drive through yet. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. So this could change altogether if they don't approve that. I'm sorry? This could change altogether if, if, if they don't yes. approve that. So you'll be back. Okay. Yes. All right. So the, this, the three spots that we're talking about, this parking, I mean, I, I would have to agree. I, as far as the green space, it's not, to me, is not really that much of a green space to get rid of. I would be way more concerned about where it's positioned at and how they back up and how you got the drive through grow, going. So as far as as far as those three spots, I'm sorry, my opinion would be I'd have to stick with the zoning board and decline it. That would be my opinion on that. Other I'm than just, that, I think you're you're good as long as I die. I'm just curious going. because along with Trustee Carter, I thought just we're just putting a subway in there, not expanding three more uh, businesses. Uh, when did this all come about? I mean, you're, Chief Sutton, you said this was always the plan, this big of an area, but I don't recall. I thought it was just going to be subway because it's kind of crowded down there. Well, I think during their negotiations, subway made the statement they wouldn't need that much square footage. That's that's why he's going to have extra space in the new development. That came during their conversation. Yeah. Maybe we could just so back it up. So from 4,500 square feet to 1,500, that's a, that's a big difference. Than not knowing what they needed. Huh? What do you have currently? What does Subway... Do you know what Subway has? Subway, Subway uh, footprint right now is 1,500 square. Yep. Is it necessary for your development to be this amount of square feet to make it profitable? Absolutely. I mean, the amount of taxes that we're paying on that commercial property is about 16000 a year. If you divide that per month, you need everything you can possibly get out of that corner of property. I understand that, but I have a business that's only around 1,000 square feet, and even if you cut off 500 square feet of this, you're making up where you're feeling like your loss of parking. So I think there are businesses that would still pay even if you dropped this building by 500 square feet. They would have a 1,000 square foot property. Without the drive-through, I would probably be going for a larger building opposed to a smaller building just because you want to maximize the square footage of your space on a commercial war memorial 40,000 drive by a day. So if the if the drive through pulls out, I'll probably come back with a 5,000 and completely go down to the 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 actual lot line. So it's it's not a it's it's not an issue. I mean, when when you're paying for a commercial property and you're paying the real estate taxes on the commercial property, you want to develop it to the fullest to to where it's going to be benefit you. So just getting back to the green spaces, because that seemed where a lot of the concern was. 
Do I understand it right that the the only loss of green space would be the additional parking? Correct. Correct. Absolutely. And again, it's it's 600 square foot, and it's probably just a tad bit under that. It's still going to take me about 45 minutes to push the mower, so there's a quite a bit of grass still there. So you're saying that from the where you nose into this parking, this angled parking to War Memorial, it's 90 feet of grass. I'm sorry, the 90 feet. That's the. If you were nosing into these angled parking spaces from where your car is, there's still an additional 90 feet of green space. Correct. Before you hit War Memorial. No, from 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 the first corner of that parking spot to the corner of Monroe and War Memorial, there would be 90 feet. Okay. We have a total of 130 foot frontage, and we're just pulling out a 40 foot okay. of that 130. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Mr. Kemp. Thank, uh, I want thank to you. Thank everyone for showing up tonight. We expect to take action on this at the when we call the village board meeting to order after this public hearing. So I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Public hearing is adjourned.